Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to Finch's Flight. In the last episode, we welcomed a brand new cat into our territory, Galen or Galen the Healer, who seems as if he might have some secrets of his own hidden up his sleeve. That striking blue fur has to remind Finch of maybe a Lyris from the Forest Colony. And the way that he speaks, too, he has a very, very poetic way of speaking. The busy bee is always building, yet is never satisfied with its work. You know, something tells me that uh, they would probably get along quite well, Lyris and Galen. My work requires me to consider the well-being of my patients, not just physically, but mentally as well. How are you doing today, Finch? I hope you are as well as I am. Oh, that's very sweet. So he doesn't only focus on mending the physical wounds of our cats, but he always makes sure that uh, everybody's in high spirits too. That everyone is feeling well in both body and mind. His looks and his way of acting does make me wonder if perhaps he's also related to the Forest Guardian. I mean, that blue fur is very, very striking. In fact, it reminds me of the skin that we have in here too. The Forest Guardian skin. I mean, look how similar these are. Aside from the fact that we're literally glowing right now, it is uh, quite similar in my opinion. So maybe as we learn more about Galen, we'll discover if there's any connection. But Finch, you desperately need some breakfast. And good thing you have these blackberries right next to your den. Another good reason that we placed your leader's den so close to the northern portions of the territory. Now he'll be able to gather up his fresh berries all throughout the seasons. Now, I read all of your comments over the past couple of videos regarding Claudius and Galen, and quite a few of you seem to be very, very attached to these cats. And I can't blame you, I'm pretty attached too. Claudius is just the perfect name for a guard like this little one. A strict social order is necessary to the function of any great society. There are few cats at the top and many cats at the bottom, but it is also important that a lower cat may climb easily to a higher level of status. Ah, oh, so maybe Claudius is hoping to rise in the ranks someday too. And I mean, since he was the very first cat who joined us, the very first one to give Finch a chance, I wouldn't be surprised if he does become our second in command. It probably helps that Claudius reminds Finch so much of his father too, because of course he absolutely adores his bunnies for breakfast. So while Claudius and Galen might not be changing in name, I did see quite a few other suggestions for future cats that I am very, very interested in. For instance, maybe one of Finch's siblings might want to come by and lend a hand in the future? We'll have to see how his story unfolds as we get further and further into the Feather Colony. Now our plan today was to go down to the Forest Colony to say hello to all of our old friends. But first, I wanted to take a quick stop at Coco's shop, because I'm pretty sure that we can also sell our items to Coco too. So we don't technically need a shopkeeper right away if we want to uh, increase our supply of Muse. We'll go ahead and sell off all of those dragonflies we collected, a few of our extra mice as well, but we will save some on hand because something tells me that our trip to the forest colony is going to be very, very hard on us. We do need to make sure that we take care of the battles before we go, but luckily, those are kind of leading toward the pathway that will eventually take us to where our old family lives. So Claudius, you watch the borders, okay? We have a pretty big job ahead of us. The one silver lining is that I do think we're going to come across quite a few herbs. Finch hasn't really explored the rest of the world since he uh, came to lead the Highland Lake. So that means all of the resources that grow in the fall time season should be available for us to use to our advantage now, as long as Penny hasn't come by to scoop them up first. So maybe we should also consider upgrading one of our skills? We can upgrade fighting right now, and I feel like Finch has probably earned the extra level since he has done us so much fighting over the past couple of days. So hopefully we're going to have plenty of guards on our side this time. Let's see who's fighting us down here today. Oh, of course it would be the Mountain Domain. So let's get in there and try to take care of these cats before they take out all of our guards. Oh, 
my goodness. Okay, Leo was not messing around today. He really sent out quite a few of his reinforcements. We only have two more to take care of though, so let's try to get them one at a time. I don't really want to use our alliance roar on such few cats. If it was still that giant horde, then maybe I would be a little bit more willing. This helps us out with our muse too. I bet if we have to uh, fight our way into the forest colony, then we'll come back with tons and tons of muse in our pockets. Don't forget your berries though. That would be good for a quick little snack. As we make our way up toward the battle by the mountains, I believe that was the tile that we were trying to control the other day. So after this battle, I wouldn't be surprised if it's completely inside our territory. Oh, and these berries have grown back too. Excellent. Quite a few of your delicious blackberries have grown back today. But let's scoot on up here, up in the north, and try to chase out those mountain cats yet again. This time, we have more cats on our side, so I think we should be fine without using our abilities. And it's already getting dark too. Oh my goodness. Of course, because it's a colder season, that means the darkness is going to come much, much earlier. But yeah, this tile is completely under our control now. So we're only missing the Highland North, which still has a little bit of influence from Penny. And then we also need the Highland Corner directly below us. So pretty soon, Finch, I would say probably by the end of the season, this should be all yours. Yours for the taking. You might as well use some of this lavender too to help it along, and then we can start making our way toward the forest. You know, I wonder if we might end up missing the forest colony before we get there. Something tells me it's going to be pretty dark by the time we make it to our old home. Finch honestly could not have picked a farther place to set up than the Highland Lake, but it does give him plenty of room to work with that won't butt heads with the forest. I wonder if they would mind if we spent a little bit of time hunting, oh geez, hunting by the uh, fairy wood too. That was where Penny usually gathered up her doves to sell off for the muse. But it looks like they're already a little bit angry that we're wandering around here. Yeah, we are going to have to be super, super careful. The forest colony is not messing around. That's why they have so much of the uh, territory under their control. They have some very, very strong cats fighting for them. And we know that from experience. I do know that there are often some good herbs around here though. Some more golden seals to replenish our supplies. And we should be seeing some catnip around here too. Excellent. We can actually drop that off with Sarge. And hopefully that'll be enough for them to allow us to check out their shops. I do want to see if they're selling anything new now. Maybe a brand new type of a style for us to use up in our Highland Lake. Some different way to decorate our dens and whatnot. We'll have to wait and see. But Finch knows this pathway very well. As long as we follow these stones, and as long as we watch our pack to make sure that nobody's going to try to ambush us, then we should be able to make it straight over to the forest colony's door. I'm pretty sure that they will also still allow us to walk inside. Yeah, our reputation with them is pretty good. Not quite good enough for us to check out their shops, but once we give them that catnip, they are going to change their minds right away. And we did get here just in time too. Oh my gosh, isn't this so nostalgic though? It is so strange to think that we're not actually part of this colony anymore. This was the only colony that we've really known until now. And hello, Scout. Oh, it's been such a long time since we've seen you. Hey, buddy. What's new with you, Finch? Did you hear me whistling a little while ago? I sure hope not. Oh, Scout, he's a little bit embarrassed. He doesn't want to act silly in front of his son, especially because he knows how much a success he's been having lately. But let's go ahead and give him a nice juicy rabbit, just like what Claudius loves. And then we'll head on over to Sarge to offer up some of these uh, lovely catnip plants. So let's give our catnip to the forest colony. Our colony thanks you for your impressively generous gift. Your reputation with the forest colony is at 53%. I'll tell the colony that they should start offering you their services as well. You seem trustworthy enough. Oh, Sarge, you know that you can always trust Finch. I'm sure he's very, very happy to see you inside the borders again. 
So hopefully Ember is still out. Yeah, looks like he hasn't gone to bed yet. So hello, Ember. Finch, what brings you by the store today? Well, we're just curious if maybe you have anything special inside your inventory now. Anything new that we might want to take a look at? He's actually selling tiger butterflies now. I'm pretty sure that he wasn't selling those before. Which is interesting because, of course, as I'm sure you guys know, we do need the uh, tiger butterflies for the forest guardian. Yeah, the forest style. A pack of architectural styles for your custom colony. Looks like the forest colony. Oh, that would be so cool to bring to uh, our colony. Something to just uh, remind Finch of home. I bet the normal dens would look just like these. Though I wonder what the leader's den would look like. Maybe like the one that we used to live in over here, Penny's special little den. And I mean, look at all of the stuff that Penny has brought home lately. She has blue chase absolutely everywhere. I wonder if she would mind if we uh, picked one up for ourselves to take it back to our colony. Surely not. Surely that's why she left those right under the trees. I'm pretty sure there are a couple more areas around here that we could possibly grab some catnip from though. Oh, and of course, those very, very important herbs. We'll gather up the golden seal, the lavender along the way, anything that might help us in our efforts to increase our own territory, of course. We don't want Finch to return home too late, but the uh, catnip would be a great thing for us to sell off to Coco to gain the extra muse. So let's try sprinting straight up. I did notice that we had some berries to pick over on the side, but the catnip is slightly more important. There it is, being guarded by the gray squirrels. Well, not anymore, buddy. We need to take this home for ourselves. So I believe the catnip is worth, was it 15 or 20 mews a piece? Which is much better than the little mice we were selling before. So let's have Finch curl up and go to sleep. And then we'll uh, charge out to see if Coco would be willing to take those off of our hands. Yeah, since we can sell him our items, I'm not too concerned about getting the shopkeeper right away. And since the shopkeeper is so expensive, it would probably be best for us to work our way toward that over time. It does make me wonder if there are any special items there though. I mean, there has to be a reason why it is so expensive for us to get our hands on. But we'll sell off our gray squirrels too. I guess we might as well sell off the other mice because it doesn't really seem like we're eating those. We've been relying more on the berries so far. Then perhaps that lovely little blue jay that we found by Penny's den. Wait a second. Oh my gosh, that is worth a ton of muse. Maybe we'll have to consider asking Penny if she wouldn't mind parting with a few more. Now we're up to over 200 Mews, so we're actually super, super close to uh, being able to maybe purchase one of the marriageable cats, which I think would be a fun thing for us to consider. Something to maybe breathe a little bit more life into our colony. The busy bee is always building, yet is never satisfied with its work. I think that might be a little hint that Galen wants to make sure we're making time for ourselves, too. He doesn't want us to overwork ourselves. But we have a little bit more Valerian for you. Hopefully this will be enough to push us over to that fourth star. He really does seem to like these, but the herbs are always a sure bet. A well-timed song can uplift the spirit in remarkable ways. Some say that music even has healing properties. Oh, interesting. You know, I bet Starling would actually really love Galen too. So maybe if he does decide to grace us with his presence in the future, they might like to talk together. But we do have some bunnies for you, Claudius. These are actually little gifts that uh, our own mother gave us before we started our colony. So I hope you're going to enjoy these. Finch himself doesn't really like rabbits too much, so I think that's why he's willing to give all of these away. He is more into frogs and berries and licorice roots, strange little things like that. But look at that, we already have our fourth star with Claudius. Oh my gosh, he's just so adorable. Your den looks marvelous from a distance, Finch. My compliments to yourself and Coco for its construction. Well, thank you very much. We'll have to let Coco know that you love it so much. 
Maybe we'll even uh, upgrade your den someday, give you a brand new look from one of the many, many different styles that we can collect. I also wanted to place some walls around his den too, just to kind of fortify it a little bit more, give it some special decorations. But of course, we are going to need the muse for that first. Let's just make sure that we remember to actually place down one of our fights for tomorrow. I guess we should probably consider maybe chipping away at this tile. It shall be done. I will send our fighting cats to that location tomorrow morning. Excellent. Thank you very much, Claudius. And we will go out to make sure that the cats in our territory right now are ready to leave. It won't be much longer before we have Leo completely surrounded. He's going to be basically cut off from the rest of the forest if we take over these tiles around his territory. I'm not sure if Finch would be that mean, to be honest. As long as Leo stays out of the uh, Highlands, I think he's going to be willing to come up with some sort of truce. But our daily battles are waiting. So I think we're ready to take care of the cats here. You know, one of our guards actually looks quite a bit like Penny. And one of them is actually named Feather, too. Oh my goodness, unfortunately, they both fell to our enemies, so we won't be able to uh, say hello to them. And they are completely tearing through us as well. Okay, we better use some of our herbs as we try to pick them off one by one. If we can get maybe Dawn, it seems like... Oh jeez, oh my goodness. Wait a second, are they fighting each other? Oh my gosh, those are different colonies. We are actually witnessing a fight between the Mystic Colony and the Mountain. And now, unfortunately, it's just us and the Mystic Colony. Oh my goodness. I don't think we've ever seen that before. We have certainly never had reinforcements from a different enemy colony come charging into our battles. We're going to have to use more of our herbs, though, if we want to take care of these cats, too. You know, I don't think we've even seen the Mystic Colony, like, try to battle with us before. Oh my gosh, and now we have more mountain reinforcements. What on earth is going on? Oh, there is just way too many. We might have to use our Lion's Roar now just to make them scatter and then try to pick them off one by one. Oh, they're all running away to the cliff sides. They were hiding over there in a big giant group. Yeah, I probably should have tried to land a few good hits while they were cowering in the corner. But I was worried that they would turn and uh, strike Finch when he was least suspecting it. Yeah, I think we might have to call this one a win for the Mountain Colony. I think they may have beaten us here. They are just way too strong. So if we're going to live to fight another day, we're going to say goodbye to all of their warriors. Yeah, that was so interesting. Did they take any uh, influence? Unfortunately not, and we only have 4% over the alone sentinel now. But that's good to know that we could potentially have bigger skirmishes than we ever thought possible. And I think Finch is going to need some of his uh, little frogs to fill him up this time. Something a bit more substantial than just uh, the berries of the forest, because that was a very, very stressful moment for the poor little guy. I don't know if we really have enough energy to try the one in our territory. I mean, I feel like we kind of have to because that is in the place that's under our control. So let's go ahead and scoop up some of these rare dragonflies to bring to Coco. That way we'll be able to pay for our doctor's visit. Because I have a feeling that Galen is going to want quite a few muse to heal us after this. We took uh, quite a bit of damage. Oh, look at that. We have more golden seals to pick up. More of those little gifts, of course, that we saw when we were creating our colony. We have um, some catnip to sell off as well. So maybe we'll be all right. We'll just scoop up this bunny for Claudius, and then we'll see what Galen can do. You know, one thing I never checked is whether or not we can give any gifts to Coco. I'm kind of leaning on the no side, because it didn't really seem like he had any uh, friendship levels. But just in case... Let's see if uh, Coco will accept any of our gifts. No, okay, I just had to make sure, Coco. Just had to make sure that you weren't hoping for uh, something special from Finch. Because, of course, we wouldn't want to leave you out. So hopefully 20 Mews will be enough for us to pay for our next doctor's visit. It's such a bummer, too, because we are so, so close to buying a new cat. 
but I still think we'll be able to invite someone new before the winter. So 23 mews for a full dose, which is just barely over what we were able to uh, scrape up with all of those dragonflies, but it's well worth it because now we should be able to charge into the second battle with a little bit more success. For that matter, maybe we can even try our hand at beating the mountain cards again if we do have enough energy and if it doesn't get too late. But the first question is going to be whether or not we can even survive the one directly below us. So let's see who's fighting today. Oh, the mountain calling again. Yeah, I guess it's just because we are so close to their territory that even though this one seems to be on the side of the mystic colony, the mountain cats are just the bigger force. Luckily, our lion's roar is almost available. So after we take out a couple of the cats on the outskirts, we should be able to use it. It is worth noting that the developers did actually make hard mode even harder since the uh, initial update, so that might be why we're having so much trouble right now, and it also means that Finch is really going to have to train himself harder if he wants to take care of the mountain cats. But I think thanks to our lion's roar yet again, that mystical, magical ability, we should be able to uh, get rid of Howl and then carry on our merry way. There we go. That probably gained us back all of those mews too. And we kept the Highland under our control. So yeah, I think Finch is a little bit too beat up to consider going back into that other battle. They definitely had the upper hand because it is so close to their main home. So we're going to have to come up with a better plan of attack if we do want to get rid of the cats there. For now, we'll just settle for more peaceful pastimes, like spreading all of that lavender around the land. A little bit of extra too at the Highland Corner. This might be enough for us to take control of this area too. There we go, a little bit of extra breathing room. Then we might as well go down to this tile, the Prairie North, to start chipping away at Penny's influence slowly consuming the entire pathway that she created before. We'll have to try to figure out what would be the best path for us to take to uh, get straight to the sacred temple. We're going to need an easy access route for ourselves too. So either we cut through the mystic colony and try to take over this river islet, or we use that old worn pathway by the hollowed garden to take control instead. That'll be even more important in the coming days because pretty soon it's going to be the end of fall, and that means that we're going to need to go to the temple to enjoy the festivals. And I'm really excited to see if our new cats are going to join in. I would imagine that Claudius and Galen would be just as excited as we are to uh, meet the other colonies. So hopefully we'll see some new friendly faces to interact with there. Finch is having a little bit of trouble hunting in this territory though. It might be because he's a little bit nervous after all of those ambushes, of course. After all of those gigantic battles, he doesn't want to get caught off guard again. And it looks like we may have spoken too soon. Okay, go ahead and use one of your golden seals because I have a feeling you're going to need it. Even though it's only one cat, they just hit so hard that if you're not on your best game... Oh no, and he's called in reinforcements too. Okay, Finch is leaving Latte. You guys can go back to your patrolling because Finch is definitely out of here. Yeah, you know, we might want to also consider hunting down some more of those power paws because it seems like uh, 115 health points is just not enough for Finch to survive in the Highlands. But let's go ahead and warp back home. I think that would be a little bit easier than stumbling our way back because there is quite a bit of ground to cover and Finch needs a nice long rest after all of those skirmishes with the mountain. So in the next episode, we should be seeing the end of fall and we might even have enough muse in our pocket to maybe consider inviting one of the new marriageable cats into our colony. So I believe there were three choices to choose from. And you guys have been leaving some really great suggestions for names for these cats. So if you have any last minute ideas, then do let me know. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, guys!